Welcome to Real Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about stoichiometry and enthalpy. What's all that business? Well, basically what we're thinking about here is when I run a reaction, how much heat's produced or how much heat's absorbed. And so one example we could think of is going to your stove. And if you have a gas burner, your gas burners burn natural gas. That's methane. And methane's combined with oxygen and it produces CO2 and water. We also know it produces heat. That's how we cook our food. And you might want to know how much heat can I produce if I burn a certain quantity of natural gas. So how much natural gas do I need to burn so I can cook my food? In this case, let's think about the question, how much heat's going to be released if I burn 2.5 moles of methane? And the way we're going to do that is we're going to recall our rules from stoichiometry, which is thinking about chemical reactions as a list of ingredients that we put in and the products that we put out. And we can basically just tack on how much heat a reaction is produced and think of that as a product of our reaction. Let me explain what I mean. So here, I list this delta H of reaction thing. And what that's telling us is how much heat's released every time I run the reaction. So I run the reaction once, and I get off 890 kilojoules of heat. Let me explain a little more carefully what I mean by that. So if we look at our reaction, right, it combines one mole of methane, there's an implied one here, with two moles of oxygen. If I combine one mole of methane with two moles of oxygen, then I'll get out 890 kilojoules of heat. And that means that I can use my chemical recipe, my chemical reaction, and this delta H thing to write equalities that I can use to solve problems. For example, if I burn one mole of CH4, well, that's going to give me my negative 890 kilojoules of heat. More on why that's negative in a second. So the reason that's one is because there's a one in my chemical recipe. On the other hand, it takes two moles of O2 to give me that same negative 890 joules, kilojoules. Why is that? Well, I have a two here, and that's the same two that I have in front of my oxygen. So I look at my chemical recipe, my chemical reaction, and I combine that with this delta H thing. And when I do that, I can write these equalities that allow me to solve problems. Let me explain a little bit more why that thing is negative and what enthalpy is, and then we'll do a few practice problems. So enthalpy turns out to be the heat released from a reaction. Now, technically, that's the heat released from a reaction only at constant pressure. But when we do chemical reactions, we're almost always in the laboratory where we're at atmospheric pressure, and that pressure doesn't change. So you can almost always think of enthalpy just as the heat a reaction produces. Now, some things about the sign conventions we use. You see here this sign is negative, and we know that methane, when we burn it, when we burn natural gas, it makes heat. And it turns out we use a negative sign when heat's released and a positive sign when heat's absorbed. So if you have a reaction that gets cold, that would actually have a positive sign. If you have a reaction that gets hot, that has a negative sign. And this goes back to our sign conventions from thermodynamics. If we remember thinking about changes in internal energy, when we increase internal energy, that's a positive sign. And when we decrease in internal energy, that's a negative sign. And here we're considering methane to be our system. So negative signs means that methane loses energy and gives that up as heat to the surroundings. So things that get hot, we have a negative sign there. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to solve some problems. Specifically, we're going to start off by calculating how much heat's produced when we burn 2.5 moles of methane. So how are we going to do that? Well, the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off by writing an equality involving delta H. That's basically the same thing we did a few seconds ago where we thought about how many moles of each reactant you need to burn to get off this quantity of heat. And so here, the question asks about methane, about CH4. And we know that the number in front of CH4 is 1. That's a really bad 1. We know that the number in front of CH4 is 1. And we know that the heat of reaction is negative 890 kilojoules. So the equation I can write, the equality I can write, is 1 mole of CH4 is equal to negative 890 kilojoules. So that gives me the relationship between burning 1 mole of methane and how much heat I'll get out. And I can use that to solve my stoichiometry problem. Okay, so that's step one. Step two says write the starting and target quantities. And so the starting quantity here is my methane because that's what we're given. We're given 2.5 moles of methane. So I'm just gonna write 2.5 moles of methane, which is CH4. And my target quantity is heat produced, is kilojoules. So it says how much heat is produced. So I know I wanna get to the kilojoules. 
So I'm going to write kilojoules over here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this problem. Now, keep in mind that step three is convert grams to moles as needed. So if you see any time where you have moles and you need to get grams or vice versa, you're going to have to add that to these sorts of problems. But once I've written my starting and target equalities, quantities, I can just go ahead and fill in my conversion factor. So how do I go from moles to kilojoules? Well, that's where the equality I wrote in step one comes in handy. This equality goes from kilojoules to moles. I know I want to get rid of moles, so I write one mole on the bottom of CH4, and I know that's going to give me out negative 890 kilojoules. So this is just, in this case, a one-step conversion problem. And the moles cancel out, and that's going to give me kilojoules. And if I plug that into my calculator, what I'm going to get out is negative 2,200 kilojoules of heat. So that's the heat produced from my reaction if I burn 2.5 moles of methane. Let's do a few more practice problems. So this one deals with the same reaction. We're still burning methane, but it asks how much heat is produced when 12 grams of oxygen fully react with methane. And so now we start with grams, and we're starting with oxygen instead of methane. We're still going to do the same thing in step one. We're going to write the equality involving delta H. And so now that we have oxygen, what we're going to say is that two moles of oxygen, because there's a two in front of that O2, will give me out 890 kilojoules of heat. So I write two moles... O2 is equal to negative 890 kilojoules. That means I burn two moles of O2 and I get out 890 kilojoules of heat. And now I'm going to write my starting quantity, which is 12 grams, and my target quantity, and I want to go to heat once again, so my target quantity is going to be kilojoules. So I'll write out 12 grams here, 12 grams of O2, that's what I'm starting with, and I know that I want to go eventually to kilojoules. Now, I can't use the conversion factor with moles in it when I have grams. So that's where the step three comes in. I've written my starting and targeted quantities, and now I need to convert to grams or moles as needed. And since I start with grams of oxygen and I want to be able to use this conversion factor between moles and kilojoules, that means the first thing I'm gonna do is go from grams of oxygen to moles of oxygen. And there, we need to look up the molar mass of oxygen, and that turns out to be 32 grams per mole. So one mole of oxygen is 32 grams. And now, my grams are canceled out, and what I'm left with is oxygen and moles. And so now I can use that equality I wrote. I know I want to cancel out my moles of oxygen, so I write two moles O2 on the bottom. And on top, I know I'm going to get negative 890 kilojoules of heat for every two moles of oxygen I burn. Why is that? Well, my chemical equation tells me, burn two moles of oxygen with methane, get out 890 kilojoules. So that's where that equality comes from. And now all I have to do is plug that into my calculator, and that will tell me that I get out negative 170 kilojoules. And that's to two sig figs. So I get out negative 170 kilojoules, which basically means... I burn 12 grams of oxygen and it produces 170 kilojoules of heat. That negative sign again means heat's released. So that's how much heat's produced, 170 kilojoules. All right, last problem. We're going to look at a slightly different reaction this time. Now we're going to be combining iron, solid iron, with oxygen to make iron oxide. That also turns out to release heat. And in this problem, we're going a little bit of a different direction. It says how many grams of iron are required to produce 1370 kilojoules of heat. So now we're going from heat two kilojoules. And that'll be important, particularly when we go to step two. So step one says write the equality involving delta H. And notice that we're interested this time in iron. And so we look at the number in front of iron, and that's four. And we look at the delta heat of reaction, and that's negative 1650 kilojoules. And so that's how we write that equality. We say four moles of iron. When I combine four moles of iron with three moles of oxygen, I'm going to get out negative 1650 kilojoules of heat. So that's the equality that I'm going to use to do this stoichiometry problem involving enthalpy. And that's the title of this video, right? Stoichiometry, using our chemical recipes, enthalpy, thinking about the heat produced by chemical reactions. All right, now I'm going to do step two, which is write my starting and target quantities. And I'm starting out with heat this time. So I start out with 1370 
kilojoules. And I know that I want to go to eventually, let me move that down. I know that I want to go to eventually grams. So I'm starting with kilojoules and I'm going to grams. Now, one tricky thing here is that quantity of heat's actually negative because we know we're producing heat. So we're starting with negative 1370 kilojoules of heat. And you often have to look at your problem to interpret what the sign should be. If you're producing heat, that's negative. If you're absorbing heat, that's positive. And now since I have kilojoules, I can right away use my equality that I wrote down. I can go to moles of iron. And so we know that we want to get rid of kilojoules. And so kilojoules are going to go on the bottom. And we want to get moles, so moles are going to go up top. And what we know is that if I have four moles of iron, that I get out 1650 kilojoules. So negative 1650. That takes me from kilojoules to moles of oxygen. And now, or I'm sorry, moles of iron. And now that I have moles of iron, I need to go to grams of iron, because that's the final step. And I need to convert grams to moles as needed. That's what step three tells me. And in this case, I have moles of iron and I need to go to grams of iron. So I look on the periodic table and I see that iron has a molar mass of 55.8 grams. And that's for one mole of iron. When I plug that into my calculator, I'll get out 185 grams. So I need 185 grams of iron. If I combine 185 grams of iron, I'll get out 1370 kilojoules of heat. So in this video, we've talked about how you can use the enthalpy of a reaction, how much heat it produces at constant pressure, to calculate how much heat you'd produce depending on how much of the different ingredients you put into that reaction. So if you have any questions still about enthalpy or stoichiometry, please ask them below. You can also subscribe to Real Chemistry to receive updates about future videos.